Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, trolls and derps alike. Welcome. I am Mullet Mike. Titty Sprinkles. You creepy gaming. The show where we take a look at a lot of creepy video game easter eggs, urban legends, creepy pastas, and all sorts of other scary shit. Got something really special for you today, folks. As, as you probably know, today we will be looking at The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Big sticky shout out to Mega Orwell 1984, Fish, LOL Mario Link, and Zippy Curve. Thank you for your suggestions. So many of you suggested this video. Alright, I'm going to start out with a brief history of the game's development, followed by a quick review, and of course we'll go over a creepy aspect or two. So without further ado, turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some creepy gaming. <laughs> After the release of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Nintendo wanted to cash in on a sequel, but not just to rehash the same elements of its predecessor. I mean, Ocarina of Time was one of the greatest Nintendo 64 games ever, and dare I say, one of the greatest games of all time. But that's debatable. Regardless, Nintendo had to step up to the plate in order to follow up such a classic revolutionary title. Majora's Mask director, Eiji Anuma, was quoted as saying, We were faced with the very difficult question of just what kind of game could follow Ocarina of Time in its worldwide sales of 7 million units. So respectfully, the development team didn't try to top the overpowering awesomeness that is Ocarina of Time, but instead wanted to create something totally different. And by different, I mean an LSD-induced peyote flavored mushroom cap nightmare version of The Legend of Zelda. Mashura's Mask made a huge departure from the rest of the series. The story is unlike any other. There's no Hyrule, no Ganon, no Princess Zelda. Think about that for a second. Zelda not being in a Zelda game. Well, to be fair, she does make a small appearance. But it doesn't really count because it's just a flashback scene. I mean, it's, it's barely a cameo. Unlike other games in the series, she does not play a pivotal part of the story in this installment. This game is also much darker and creepier than any other game in the Zelda franchise. It even gives Twilight Princess a run for its money. Another difference is that Majora's Mask doesn't follow the typical Zelda format. These major differences alienated many players, causing them to dismiss this title as a mere sequel. A quick cash-in, if you will. The game was developed in only 18 months, whereas the typical Zelda title can take anywhere from 3 to 6 years to complete. But don't let that fool you, though. It was only because they used the same engine as Ocarina of Time. What the Nintendo team did in 18 months is remarkable. I'll just say that Majora's Mask was in no way a quote-unquote mere sequel by any means. It is a whole nother experience. Granted, it is a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time, but Majora's Mask takes many liberties with the typical Zelda formula. Instead of the predictable similar plots of other Zelda games, Majora's Mask flips it on its side. So what's so creepy about this game? Hmm, I don't know. How about fucking everything? What about the masks? How about the mask salesman? Hmm? How about his creepy laughter? <laughs> what about the skull kid? What about the Deku ambush? Or what about the hellish descent into the crazy upside down world of Terminal? <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. So you start out, you and Epona, strolling through what appears to be the Lost Woods. You come across this mischievous little skull kid. He's already stolen the Mask of Majora, and now the little bastard decides to steal your ocarina and Epona. What a dick! While trying to retrieve your goods back, the skull kid lures you into a trap, and with the power of the mask, he transforms you into a Deku. The transformation cutscene is so creepy with all the Deku scrubs overtaking Link. 
followed by this huge oversized Deku like closing in on you. It's very unsettling. And, th and this is just the beginning of the game. This is literally five minutes into it. Let this set the tone to what is a very disturbing game. The happy mask salesman tells Link that the Mask Majora has this evil apocalyptic power, which was once used by this ancient tribe in hexing rituals. This ancient tribe, afraid of the mask's power, sealed it away so it wouldn't get into the wrong hands. <laughs> Too bad that didn't work. To make things even creepier, the Skull Kid, under the power of Majora's mask, has the moon on a crash course to destroy Termina. Still not creepy enough? What if I told you the moon looks like this? Yeah, this game is full of good old-fashioned nightmare fuel. Majora's Mask is definitely the darkest entry into the Zelda series. Playing this game at a young age left me feeling really disturbed. I remember the happy mask salesman creeping me out in Ocarina at a time. So imagine my chagrin just to see him back and now playing a more predominant role in the moon. My god, the moon. Don't... Don't even get me started on the moon. That's it, moon. Don't look at me like that. What? First sketchy Sonic now, you two? All right, staring contest. Me and you right now. Ready, go. Ah, oh, damn it. You win again. You're indeed a worthy adversary, sir, but just know I'll never respect you. <laughs> Cry, baby. But seriously, what's with all the creepy character designs? It's not bad enough that impending doom is on its way to Termina, but does the moon really have to look like it just snorted a five-gallon bucket of blow? Yeah, that's another thing about Majora's Mask that always unsettled me, is that the game works off of a time limit. So even though you can use the ocarina to turn time back, or use the fourth day glitch, it's still really nerve-wracking trying to save the world under such pressure. It's said that Shigeru Miyamoto himself was the one who came up with the idea of the time limit. And now that I look back at it, seems like something Miyamoto would contribute. I mean, the man's always thinking outside the box. And even though it's frustrating and unnerving, don't think that I don't like the time limit aspect. It's really original and adds to the nightmarish atmosphere of the game. So what do I think of the game overall? Pretty twisted for a kid-orientated title, but damn is it a good game. Like most people, I was skeptical at first, but after playing it, I found out how great of a game it really is. If you look past this title and didn't play it, do yourself a favor and definitely give it a try. It's easily worth the $10 on the Wii Virtual Console. Majora's Mask definitely left a mark on creepy video game history. The happy mask salesman will haunt your dreams. His laughter will pierce your soul. The dark atmosphere of Termina makes you feel claustrophobic and unsettled. And the moon won't let you forget that you're just three days away from mass destruction. It's pretty scary. I guess the best way I can describe Majora's Mask is if... Ocarina of Time and LSD Dream Emulator had a bastard alien rape baby of a son. That son's name would be Majora's Mask. So yeah. Huh. Is that it? Is that all the creepy stuff? Seems like I'm forgetting something. Hmm. <sighs> Fuck.